our blue planet is controlled by water. Everything we do, everything, everything we do is controlled by water. And it sits on a balance that's controlled by that valuable, valuable resource. In fact, just 2.5% of the world's water is fresh. Break it down even further, and just 1% of that 2.5% fresh water is accessible for human use due to most of it being trapped in glaciers and snowfields. This means that of all the water on Earth, just 0.025% is accessible fresh water. This number might seem tiny, but given that 70% of the Earth is covered in water, it's still an enormous amount. How else would we have made it here today? We need water. But what do we need water for? Well, apart from the fact we need it to live, these days we mainly think of water in terms of our own domestic usage, all that which we use for washing, drinking, and personal hygiene. And this adds up to about 110 liters of water per person per day. Now, this amount of water that, you use, that is used per person per day can be thought of as your own personal water footprint. Regardless of your personal water footprint, everyone here has probably heard of the effects of water shortages to some extent, whether it be through limits to your own domestic usage or through the media in regards to things like climate change. Here in WA, the Water Corporation does a great job of managing our domestic consumption of water and promoting water conservation. But these messages often fail to hit home. Today, as most of you probably did, one of the first things I did was drink a glass of water or have a shower. We're so accustomed to easy access to clean, usable water that whether we like it or not, it's hard to convince ourselves that we're currently living through a global water crisis. But here are the facts. Today, more than 650 million people do not have access to clean, usable water. By 2030, there's predicted to be a 65% increase in global demand for water, which means that 3.5 billion people will be living in water-scarce conditions. So this is a really big issue, and it has the potential to negatively impact global security. Many people recognize this. Margaret Catley Carson of the World Economic Forum is quoted in saying, water is an astonishingly complex and subtle force in an economy. It is the single constraint on the expansion of every city and the only natural limit to economic growth. Now, by 2030, there's going to be a 40% gap between the increased demand for water due to population increases, climate change, pollution, with a much lower reliable supply. So this isn't just an issue of the near future. This is happening now. The Pacific Institute, a think tank that researches the impact of global water insecurity on global stability, has found that in the past decade, there's been a four-fold increase in the amount of water-related conflicts around the world. This map shows all the areas of the world that are currently experiencing some form of conflict as a result of water. And one area that I want to highlight for you today is found here in Ethiopia. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam has been under construction for the past five years. And it's built along the Blue Nile, a tributary that supplies 60% of all the water content of the Nile. Given that this is a key strategic asset for both Sudan and Egypt, and in fact the only natural water source for Egypt, the governments of both Sudan and Egypt have been in regular contact with the government of Ethiopia in the past five years, negotiating the impact of the dam. And there has been conflict, though it might seem innocuous and not really uh, significant. These conflicts represent political tension between the three countries that could spur out of control. Just in 2013, a group of Egyptian politicians were heard on TV advocating for military action over the dam. And with the dam due for completion in 2017, these kinds of issues are something we're going to be hearing more and more about in the near future. So you can see how these kinds of issues do have the potential to negatively impact global security. If the water isn't managed correctly, politics spirals out of control. But it's not all bad news. Governments, NGOs, and charities around the world are doing great work to try and manage our water consumption. They build new infrastructure and better water management techniques. 
One such uh, organization, UN Habitat Global Water Operators Partnership Alliance, is something I've been working for recently, and I've been really enjoying the work they do, bringing better infrastructure to developing countries to help them manage their water better. Another great initiative is from the UN with World, with World Water Day. Initiatives like this help raise awareness about water shortages and make people work towards a more water secure future. But still more needs to be done if we're to avoid dire global insecurity. So, let's talk about demand. So far we've discussed the fact that we tend to think of water in terms of our own domestic usage, and that dominates the way we think about it. The second thing I mentioned was the fact that there is, there is issues with supply currently, and there will be worse issues with supply in the near future. What I've neglected to go deeper into are issues with demand. Global demand for water can be broken down into three main areas, agriculture, industry, and domestic. Now what might be immediately evident for everyone here is that domestic demand for water doesn't actually account for much of global water demand. And in fact, most of the work that governments and NGOs do towards reducing water consumption actually works to reduce the amount of water used in agriculture and industry, because that's where all the water is. But like I said, still more needs to be done. So let's talk about our demand and what we can do. Our water footprint is contributed, has contributed, oh, sorry, is added to by our domestic consumption. But we don't think about it very often. Everything we eat, everything we use, and everything we consume adds to our water footprint and uses water to produce. This is called virtual water. All the water used from the beginning of any product's life to when it reaches you, at every stage in its production and transport. And this adds significantly to our water footprint, to everyone's personal water footprint. It's quite hard to figure out exactly how much water is added to any product, but some people out there have done the research, and an organization called Water Footprint Network have crunched the numbers. They found the global average water footprint is 3,400 liters per person per day. 3,400 liters is a lot of water, but here in Australia, as in much of the developed world, that number is significantly higher, disproportionately higher, at about 6,300 liters per person per day. And I hope that shocks all of you because this is domestic plus everything we consume, all the virtual water. So where is this water coming from? Let me break down a few examples for you. Just 500 grams of wheat uses 500 liters of water to grow. Step it up another level, and the same amount of cheese, 2,500 liters. This is because now an animal has entered the means of production, and you need an investment of time, water, and food to raise the animal and produce the cheese. Up another level, and just 300 grams of beef uses 4,500 liters of water. So immediately you can see just how much water is being added to our water footprint through the means of virtual water. And that there are differences between different groups of food. In fact, in the Western world, the increased consumption of dairy and meat products has led significantly to a global water crisis. Another great example is in the clothes we wear. A single pair of jeans uses one kilogram of cotton to produce. And that cotton uses 9,460 liters of water to grow. The next major step in production is the dyeing process, and that uses about 1,540 litres. Add them together, and a single pair of jeans uses 11,000 litres of water. And that's just for the production. But as with most things we consume, our choices as consumers can help impact the amount of water we're adding to our water footprint. These days, thanks to increased awareness of water insecurity and shortages around the world, uh, processes using less water in the dyeing process, or even no water, are becoming more common. So next time you go out and buy a pair of jeans, maybe you can find a pair that don't use water in the dyeing process. It just takes a quick Google search. That can significantly reduce the amount of water you add to your personal water footprint. Back to our food again, and simply choosing between beef and chicken in any given meal can help significantly reduce the amount of water you add to your water footprint about 6,000 liters per kilogram. 
So you can really see how our choices make a difference. So, why am I telling you this? Why is it important? Well, I first learned about this when I was working in China, and I worked for an organization called FIRST. They did much the same work that I'm doing now. I went out to schools all around China, and I taught kids about water security and virtual water. And that was kind of a moment of obligation for me to do the same thing and, and continue their work. A lot of the information I'm sharing here today I learned from them. And it's important to know because although governments, charities and NGOs around the world are doing great work now to help bring water to people in need and update infrastructure, develop better water management techniques, we can also contribute. Simply by making small changes to your everyday lives, such as one meat-free day a week, choosing meat that uses less water to produce, or wasting less food, and many other changes like the ones I spoke about before. These can all help significantly reduce your personal water footprint. If we take these ideas and share them in our communities and empower ourselves as consumers, we can help make a difference. Markets listen to consumer demand, and if consumers start to demand more efficient, responsible use of water in production processes, we can all help build a more water-secure future. Thank you very much.